Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Here with Jose Neuer. Sadly, we are without Ryan this week, but we will try and persevere as a twosome. How are you this week, Joe? Yeah, good, Lee. Very good. How are you, mate? Yes, good, good. And sending our our thoughts to Ryan, who no, yeah. no thoughts to go that's bad. He's just having a week off this week from the podcast, but we miss him, but we're happy he's having a break. Yeah, yeah. I imagine he's got a lot going on by sounds. He has a busy social man. Right. Mm. Well, of course, as well, thank everyone out there for listening, downloading, supporting us, watching on YouTube, whatever you do to keep up with the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at listen to IN, listen to OIN, and of course, Joe over on social media, jnoyer underscore inspiration nation. And you can join us live each and every week as a number of people are doing right now. So, Joe, yes. I was up last week. Ryan's skiving off this week, so he gets out of it. So, I'm going to hand the baton of conversation in your direction. Right. Okay. So the topic today is the power of decision making. Okay. So the context behind this is when we make decisions. And in fact, I did this before the podcast. I was asking you a question, wasn't I? And I was asking you a question of what, you know, what you thought was a particular idea. And then you said to me, well, you just got to go with what you think. So it is about that really. So the story behind this really was a little bit about, I was unhappy in a certain job situation. And I was getting very low. My wife, I then my wife then went to the doctor for some reason because she she was struggling with something, and then told the doctor about what I was planning to do because basically I was going to just leave the job. Do you know the story? I've told you story. I was going to leave the job and just Not without any other job to go to. The podcast. I lived the story with you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So I left the job without a job, but the advice that came from the doctor, who was obviously a GP, said, "No, you can't do that." He's got to stay in the job. So there's a couple of things on this is I want to ask you, you know, when have you made a decision when you've gone against everyone else, what they were saying, all the advice, all the opinions, and then you took a decision and actually worked out okay, because for me, it worked out really great. It may not have done, but I went with what I felt and I couldn't be in that situation to make that decision. I want to ask you, the only time in your life when you've had to, to make a decision, even though you've gone against everybody, you could have been your mum, your dad, the people around you, your friends, and you just felt it had, you had to do it. Trying to think of a specific example that jumps to mind. It could be in any situation. Could be work one because I mean, I mean, you you let you lead people, don't you? And um, you know, sometimes you you might you might be taking counsel from people, but it's that thing, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't think too much personally. I don't. I don't think generally I get a lot of you know. I've made decisions, done things, gone in different directions, but not often had a lot of no. Absolutely, don't do that. In a, and it's hard, I don't give too many specific details because I've had it in a work context because I like to think I'm quite a brave work person and I make bold decisions. I think you don't get anywhere without doing that. I also think that I consider the risks or mitigate the risks when I do make said bold decisions. And there's been times before when I've been on projects and there was one, I don't go, I won't give it to you. I mean, this is going back a long number of years now, um, but was on a project we had a plan for what we we're going to do. We were close to implementation of this plan. A, a, a kind of project manager got assigned to support the delivery that we were looking to do with this. And they got very nervous about the scale that we were working at. Now, I was completely comfortable with it. We'd made our plan. We'd done similar plans before. We had contingencies if stuff went wrong. And there was significant push to not only that this was a bit risky, but this person actually wanted to shut down the entire project because they felt it was so risky. I persevered ahead with the decision to do said thing. I think they washed their hands of the decision and everything went well with it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that there wouldn't, have, there wasn't a risk of something going wrong, but within we had contingencies for what we would do if this happened. And actually the, the flip side of it is that if we did nothing, we weren't going to progress. We weren't going to change. We weren't going to move ahead with things that we needed to do that had significant benefit behind it. Um, and I think I've been in a number of situations like that where I will, I mean, you've worked with me, Joe, you know that I'm I'm quite happy, if not almost seeking out going against the status quo where there is a benefit to it. Nothing, nothing irks me more than the statement of, well, this is what we've always done. And not even as a business, but as an industry where it's kind of, you know, tried and tested and true because you never innovate and you never improve. You try don't try new things. So I think I've found myself in that position a number of times where you just want to do something that doesn't feel safe or comfortable, but it's for the benefit of, of moving things ahead. And I'd like to say, you know, hopefully 
truthfully rather than arrogantly, that it's been very rare that something I've I've positioned hasn't gone the way we wanted it to, or is something has gone wrong that we haven't been able to pivot or adjust to make sure that we got where we needed to. So what did that do for you as an individual when it, when you took that decision and you made the decision and it and it and it worked out because sometimes also they don't work out I suppose and um it's what, quite what an, happened to you personally go on it's quite an empowering thing I think I think it gives you you confidence in your decision making in your strengths you know not not to be a wallflower but to speak up especially if you're in a position to be doing that that you um you encourage yourself i mean i think it's risky you can you can become foolhardy with things but again i think i like to think that i always consider what those things are or have a plan and have demonstrated doing that in the past but i think it is it's it's an empowering thing you know you are i'm someone who thrives on accountability and i think that kind of ticks that box for me and i think a lot of people kind of fall in that position where whatever it looks like they want to feel like they're in control of their direction yeah good and i just wanted to and whilst you're doing that i don't know if you saw but got, you got likes some likes that's at fm thank you for that i appreciate you and it's great that you're back Absolutely. on the live thank you for that fm yeah and and uh, i suppose i was going to pick up what was it going to pick up on i was going to pick up on a question because you said you felt empowered no you said oh you becoming power but i want to know what what did what were you thinking Lee, at the time when you made it and it started working what did that do for you how do you mean you have to give me a nudge I feel like I answered the question. So, yeah, but you, you're doing it from a, you were saying you, like, as in outside, but I wonder how, how Leaf, how well, that Leaf is, I think that is how I felt internally. And and that and what did that lead to after that? What else did it lead to after you'd made that decision, after you'd done it and the project was working well? What what other things did it lead to from your point of view? I suppose what I'm trying to say is, like, you did that growth, you felt good. Did it lead to anything else that, did you take greater risks? Did you... I wouldn't say greater. I think I, I'd continue you... at a, a pace. I, I, you know, it, it, it didn't do anything that meant I was going to shy away from making a similar mm. decision in the future. And I think actually, even if it, and this is, I think this is a key part of it for me, is that even if it went wrong, I don't think it would deter me because it going wrong was an accepted part of the plan. You know, there, there are these risks, this could happen, and this this is what you do about it. But I don't, I don't think something not, work in the first time necessarily means that that validates you shouldn't have done it yeah and and, and you saying that the reason i asked you about how you felt because I, I like us to talk in the perspective of how it, we responded to that um as to how as opposed to like saying to people this is what you how you might feel when you, you do these things and like definitely for me when i went through that situation where everyone's saying don't you should go get an, get another job before you leave and jump and and not and not you know did I have a contingency? I did have a contingency, uh, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> it wasn't a very good net, um, but it worked out in the end. Um, there's a bit of suffering in there, but when I did it, it just had to be the right situation because had, had I stayed in that situation, emotionally, well, it would have been very difficult for me, and I didn't want to be in a period of suffering. And I think sometimes I am the type of guy, I mean, I know you got, you know, you're, you, know you, you take a lot of decisions and you, you make these calculated decisions, which is really, really great. I'm more of an emotional decision maker, which is quite, I think is quite dangerous. I think <laughs> I it think, can be. I think it can be. And I think I that think was, there, 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 there was strength that comes in that as well. I don't want to just knock that completely. No, no. You, you know, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and get caught in, as we've coined before, analysis paralysis around things and overthinking things. So there is, there is that. I mean, how, when, when that advice was given about, well, you should just stay. How did how did you feel, and what was your thought process to continue my, with what you felt was right to do anyway? Well, I said, "Hell no, am I staying? I'm not <laughs> staying." It was like it was like an it was like a really powerful emotion to say, "Hell, whatever happens, I'm prepared to put up with the concept." I suppose this is it. This is this is what it is. This is the learning. If it had failed. I was prepared to accept the consequences so that, that's think that, what it is and i don't think that's really any different than what i was saying about having mitigated and everything mm. else is that you know i wasn't eyes closed like ah, oh, it will just work it was a big acceptance but you mm. you accept and you own that consequence and you move ahead yeah. with it and i think that's the same thing you've done there and i think like you said i think in all times anything where it's a react you know the advice is you know you don't emotion react to things you take a step back and you take a breath and you let yourself digest and consider i think there's a lot of merit and gut feel as well yeah and this is how i was feeling you know i knew it was the right decision for me at that time and like you said it's the acceptance of the things that could go wrong and if they go wrong you don't blame anyone else the only person to blame is for you for making that decision 
it works out, then great. We, we can move on. And um, do you know what? And, and, and I know I mean, we had this conversation that, you know, I felt really empowered when I made it and, it, and I got through it. <laughs> I know we had to, we actually had some conversation about it, didn't we? Um, about, you know, whether we, I could hold on a little bit. I said, no, I could. do you remember I, when we had this conversation, if I could hold on a bit and I said, no, I'm not holding on. And so I think definitely, I definitely think, like you said, bravery in that situation. But I knew that I was going to be, if I stayed in where I was doing, I would have been very, very unhappy and miserable. And I was not prepared. There was, I suppose for me, it's, you, I'm not, I was not prepared to accept that misery. And so it had to happen. And I think yeah. there is that thing of back against the wall. I think I definitely respond better with my backs against the wall when I have to make a decision. If I, if, if things are, I think, you yeah, know, I can put up with that, then I'm, I'm not going to make those decisions. And maybe that's something I need to look at or whether one of radical change and actually just before the podcast lee and i were talking about decision making and there was I, i'm i'm thinking about things quite deeply at the minute and i was just speaking to lee about it and this is this is the idea that i floated with lee but the other thing is i wanted to point out was that we should triangulate with people we shouldn't not listen to people and i think the thing is about the listening to people is that doctor that gave my beloved the the the, the, the advice he didn't know anything about me he didn't know the situation he didn't know anything he was giving advice based on what he was told without knowing the context and all the information going behind it. He didn't know the situation, etc. I think that's the danger. I think when we listen to people's advice, we've got to go to people who have experience in whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. And they, you've got to have all the facts. And you can't just go, when someone says, oh, do you know, I think I should make this decision. You need to ask deeper questions and more about it before giving that advice you're going to give it. Um, although we don't do that. I mean, I've been guilty of that. If people ask me, you know, oh, I've gone, almost gone with the person's story rather than trying to be the devil's advocate. And I think, you know, Ryan's not here. And, and I know I, I pay him a lot of credit for actually playing that devil's advocate role because he does that really well in the podcast. And I think there's a big, big, a big, big advantage for that where we triangulate. Ray Dalio, I'm going to mention him again in the podcast yet again. Ray Dalio calls it triangulating. So basically he says, you think of a decision, what you do, go find someone who's got experience or, or you know, who knows about this thing, go ask them and then train them. But don't ask people because people will give you an opinion, no matter whether they know or they don't, they will. If you say, what do you think about this? You want to help. People want to help. So you will, de- you know, people will give that opinion. You're going to yeah, say something. I guess the risk is there, isn't it? Is they either give you an opinion based on what they would want to do, which doesn't necessarily align mm. with, with yourself or like you said in the story is you because you're emotionally invested, you will slant your reasons for doing something. It's not very objective. It's it's led to what you are feeling. And then they might just perpetuate that for you. But because they're getting your lens on the facts rather than that independent view. And you, you've got, like you said, you've got that risk both ways. If you start canvassing that, that you're going to get a slanted view, not that independent view or not that view from someone who's got the the experience to look at it objectively and actually give you give you a view from having gone through what you're talking about yeah and i think that's why that coaching piece is really cool we don't give the advice just ask questions yes and then Help getting the person get there helping the person make the decision for themselves i think that's what the key is around that so if you ever ask for advice don't give advice <laughs> ask them questions so they can work through the decision so the other thing i want to talk about was um risk and so you know, Simon Scoop talked about this, interviewed on the podcast. Go look at it. Um, it uh, purposeful Millionaire, I think I called it. Millionaire with a purpose. Um, but he, he thinks that, you know, luck is a skill. And so there is a certain amount of risk you have to take before you can influence your luck. Um, and we, well, I know I've, I've definitely been lucky. Um, and I think when we make decisions, I think, one, we have to respect the responsibility. But two, we can influence our luck, but depending on what decision we make. And three, I think the big thing that's come out of this for me is the, is, is the acceptance, the acceptance of the consequence of whatever that decision is. Are you prepared to take it? And I think those three things are really, really vital. Um, I was going to say, there's something else going to this, but decisions. So the power of decisions. So, yes. Lee, is there anything that's come out of that for you? Anything else? I'm the risk bit, and I love, and I remember we talked about it, Simon. People want to hear it, inspirationnation.org.uk, get through the full archive. We see a lot of people trawling through there each week. We appreciate it. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, but like you said, it is that I do like the spin Simon put on on luck because there are 
you know, we all get opportunities that come our way at completely random times that we are completely, you know, it's completely outside of our circle of control and generally relies on a huge number of external factors. It's all about your readiness when that opportunity comes along. You know, how prepared are you for it? What work have you put in previously that, you know, would maybe put you in position to see that opportunity more than others or it to be seen for you? And the risk thing is how much you, you know, every decision comes with a risk. Are we going to take a different job? If you're going to invest in something, if you're going to, you know, go to something socially you wouldn't have gone to before, there's a level of risk that comes with all of them. And what is your appetite and tolerance to accept that? And how much are you prepared to get back on the horse or stay on the horse if that particular one doesn't go your way? Because if you, if you shut yourself, if, you, if something goes wrong and you shut yourself off from it ever again, you've never got that that opportunity is never going to present itself again you've never got opportunity to lean into that luck if that's a good phrase for it yeah, um, I so that. i do i do think there is how you know the more you put yourself out there the more you take chances the more you invest in yourself the more you know you go the extra mile or you learn a different skill in case it comes along and you invest in a relationship that could be beneficial in the future the more you're putting yourself out there for things the more opportunities that come your way and like you said the more that luck comes along and i'm, I'm a big believer of that as well you know where I am in life is half is half luck, as in what has happened to come my way, which I've got no control on whatsoever. And half is how I've embraced those opportunities when they have come along. And that's not and to you say s- I've embraced everyone. We've talked about ones well, I regret in the past, but I, I think because of that, I'm more spurred on to hmm. to embrace things when they happen. I don't think you've lived with regret, have you? Because we talked in the podcast talking about, I think we talked about last week, and because you did the wrestling thing and... And you didn't really look back regret. I don't think you had regrets, have you? Uh, well, there's, I think there's opportunities that I may look back on, think oh, I wish I'd have gone with that. You don't know where it goes, so I don't think you know. Well, if, if on, have to... is, there, is there an example you're willing to share? Um, I can't think Does of it... anything now, right off the top of my head, but okay. there will be them. And I think I, I think I would have been more when I was younger. I think I was a lot more risk adverse than I am now. So a lot of this is the opportunities you don't even see, and the yeah. more you know, the the frequency of opportunities normally isn't because more have come your way. It's because of how you are approaching things to either embrace them or see them or encourage them in your direction. I think the spotting of them is the key because we don't. We we just think I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here, and you don't. You you won't see them. Um, In fact, you would have known this as well. You know, back in the day, many many years ago, I I left another business, didn't I? And and no one knew where I went. People were going, "Where's he gone? Where's he gone?" And I couldn't because there was a little bit of a conflict of interest at the time. Um, Oh, we get it nine minutes. Crikey, it's going so quickly already. And I was just trying to stick quick story, but literally, I was quite early in my career. Joe, you've got time. Quite (laughs) yeah. I don't speak too quickly, people won't be able to pick it up. But it's quite early on in my career, and and I got offered an opportunity uh, to go self-employed, which I did, and I did it for a whole year. And it was a big decision for me. I was quite young at the time; I was in my twenties, and I was quite young at the time. And I thought, do you know what? The, the question I asked myself was, would I regret it had I not given it a go? That was the question. And I, and I, I back then I was not into personal development. I wasn't thinking about these, but it was a natural thing to say. If I didn't take this decision, would I regret it? And the answer would be yes. So I did the decision. It didn't work out. I did it for a year. It didn't work out. And I and I went back. And I went back to the, the original business because it didn't work out. What did I gain from that? One, I found out that it wasn't for me and it just didn't work out. And two, I had the experience of having that self-employment piece. And so it added to my skill set, I suppose, to be able to su- survive you know, out there in the big world of, you know, all like, almost like a little bit of an entrepreneur. But the things with this, this opportunity wasn't quite entrepreneurship. I was with potentially another business. I was like working, for them. it was almost not, not working for them, but they were like, you know, they could, they could control the level of work that I'd received. So it was a little bit, I felt a little bit trapped. It wasn't like total freedom. But again, I suppose, you know, as, as we go along, we do have that. We still have to ask to people anyway, no matter what we do. But yeah, that was the thing. But I tried it. Had I not done it, I definitely would have looked back and gone, you know, I wish I should have done that. I should have done that. But I can look back and go, no, I didn't. But there are, and I said last week, and if people listen to the podcast, I'll see there's decisions I have regret uh, I have regret that I didn't do, you know, like back in the day, like become that musician. Um, so, you know, but when I look back, serendipity, when you look back, you know, had I done that and had I, had I done that, I may not be here. We may not be talking right now. So, you know, all these things lead to down a path. So yeah, I yeah, I love um 
I love the the power of I love the power of personal decisions. You know the whole you know Lee we talk about you know we talk about circles of control or circles of influence and that we have to make that decision. And then you know there are certain things we can't control, i.e., but we have to take responsibility. And I think that for me, if I'm going to give take my takeaway from me, and and I, and I know it intrinsically anyway, that we have to accept, you know, the the consequences of those decisions, and we cannot. Well, that's people, people do part. blame, right? Sorry, Lee? I was going to say that's the key part in all of this is yeah. accepting those consequences. So the key was don't blame anybody else because as soon as you blame other people, what you're doing is you're giving your power away to change because if you blame another person, and I've said this before, because I'm sure I've said it, then what you're doing or you're blaming another thing or a situation is you're taking your power away to change things because if you blame outside your circle of influence, then you, you're leaving yourself powerless to do it because you're saying, well, it's out there, then I can't do anything. You need to know... What is that? What has happened? And what can I now do? And I accept that I made decisions. So now how can I now move forward to rectify or, or damage limitation or whatever it is so I can take responsibility and move forward to where, I, you know, to, to rebuild perhaps or, you know, get to where I want to be. So, yeah, that's my takeaway, actually. No, that's good. Um, and I think, I think, Joe, like you said, and just reflect on some of those bits is it is, is that accountability piece. I mean, I talked I don't know, it was last week or week before about my story with, you know, finances up and down. And when they were down, they were quite mm-hmm. down. But mm-hmm. I didn't do lots of DIY at the moment. So I've got a screwdriver on my desk <laughs> waving around. In case be careful. On be YouTube careful. And wondering why. Yeah, be careful. Because I did that on TikTok, wasn't it? It wasn't, it wasn't a uh, screwdriver. I was doing cooking and I was doing oh, a knife okay. and it almost got a warning. So be careful. <laughs> So instead, I just haven't got a pen to grab that all. But <laughs> still, to, you know, and from influence in my life, I took that ownership of those things and i think that's always been there like we talked about you referenced before and the regrets thing i've certainly always if i wanted to do something i've pursued those dreams i think the bit i wasn't always open to and the bit i'd encourage people to look for is the things i'm not i'm not expecting to see you know um and just delving on that wrestling story and you asked an example obviously I, I talked about all the great experiences i had and i, I enjoyed with that which was really good but one of the things was when i went to see went to see a band that was related to the same world and I think I talked the story about getting up on stage and everything yeah. like that. The bit I didn't yeah. say was afterwards, who would the warm up act came out and they were kind of loitering the crowd. And I'm like, oh, we're going to pub, do you want to come to some drinks? And I think I effectively bottled it and didn't go. And I'm always like, oh, I wish I'd have taken that opportunity. I don't think that stopped me pursuing my dream because that was an opportunity that came my way that I wasn't expecting. And I, I you know, there's, again, you've got to admit, you can't just say yes to literally everything that comes along. But there's some of those things where I think, I could have embraced it a bit more if I had that that bravery earlier on. But again, you know, it's all learning experiences. We all, you know, we all grow, don't we? And I think that's that's is again, it's just that embracing of opportunities and knowing what's right for you and being prepared to live with the consequences of either doing it or not doing it and, and owning that piece. And I think that's just where the mental well being comes in that you don't you don't dwell on things too much and you can move on. And that Churchill quote I talked about last week comes back to my mind again about the courage of the courage to carry on is the thing that counts yeah i really love that um yeah i mean no matter i mean there's other ones that you need crawl or whatever um you know crawl just move keep moving forward at whatever pace it is um i think it's really great but also loved last week where you said when you're really super confident is it or something really super confident your humility and if you're really low have courage oh, that's I, think it. If it was, it's, yeah, if I it's, love if, that if things are going well Honestly. be humble and if things aren't going that's well then be brave yeah, they're humble and brave. I love that. Both, really, of yeah. them are, both of them are not permanent states. No, I really love that. Um, and again, you know, I just, uh, yeah, I just think, and again, that's the same with decisions. You know, you make a great decisions. You, you know, it worked out, be humble about it. But if you made the wrong one, have courage to move forward, right? I think that fits lovely into this particular episode of personal. But you must, I mean, the thing with decisions, and I think before we, because I know we're running out of time. But decisions, you know, the more decisions you make, you know, more definitive decisions you actually make and you're consciously making them to, to move yourself forward, the more confident you'll become, irrespective of whether they're working out or not. And even if you don't work out, you'll have the, like you did, Laura, about, you know, you said about your debt and all that. It gives you confidence that you manage that and you got through it. And if it works out, it's great. You're still moving forward. So I think out of both, you can look for the good in both areas, which is definitely one in the, in the one where people think, oh, it's failed, it's fallen, fell out of his ass. If you can take courage, then I will get through it and you will have that courage to just keep moving forward a little bit by little bit and build yourself back up. I think they're, you know, those are big, big, big wins. And I think, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's, that's from me, Lee. Over no, to you. No, it's good. I like that. Well, I just, we countdown time is, is going on. 
just want to sign post for people if you like what we're doing here leave a review um hit the subscribe button we are on all podcast platforms we are on youtube and uh check us out at inspirationnation.org.uk merchandise coaching uh service archive of all the shows sign up for joe's new le- news letter not new letter newsletter lots of good stuff going on and just follow us on social twitter is at listen to i n listen to i n and joe is on tiktok Noya underscore inspiration nation loads of great stuff going on there as well and much love to ryan as well for not coming indeed on yeah the third right. man of the crew hopefully we've done him proud this week oh right. merch i meant to go like this i meant to go oh look there's that's it joe is wearing a hoodie again inspiration nation.org.uk <laughs> right i think we're ready to hey, wrap up for this week joe Yes, dude. All right, off we, off we go. I will count this down. Thank you again, everyone out there. We'll be back again next week. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch, Catch you guys, guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below, and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.